there everyone, welcome to Edupedia World 9th grade computer applications video lecture series. I'm Upeka Vendipona and this time we are going to cover up concepts of relational database management systems. The first concept we are going to learn is entity. We also identify it as table. So an entity is a real world thing about which data is held. For example, if we capturing the name of the customer where he leaves his contact numbers, we can identify there is an entity called a customer. Likewise, in a product, we can capture the name of the product the price of the product, the expiry date of the product. So there is an entity called a product. All the items listed down here are entities because we can capture many information about each of them. So can you guess what kind of information that we are interested to keep in a book? Yeah, the name of the book, the price of the book, the author of the book, the edition of the book. So likewise, we can capture many information about the entity. The next concept we are learning is attribute. We can also call them as field. So an attribute is a feature of that entity that we have identified earlier. For example, a hotel room might have an attribute about whether it is a single room or a double room. And also we can capture whether it is AC or non AC. In the student entity, the student might have a date of birth and an address. So these are the attributes. An entity is stored as a table in a database and an attribute becomes a field in a table. All the data about a particular entity is stored in a single table. Each data item about the entity is a field. This illustration presents a database table. So we first learn what is a database record. Data in a database table is organized into rows and columns or else we can say records and fields. In each record in a relational database table corresponds to an entity. So in this example table of students above there are five records. Each record corresponds to an individual student. Note that although there are two students called Philip Barker with the same date of birth, they have different student IDs and therefore they are different students. Earlier we mentioned that an attribute is a piece of information or a characteristic of an entity. So attributes of entities are represented in a database tables by fields or else we can say columns. A field stores one item of data for a record. So in this table each student represented in the relational database by a record and the student attributes are stored in the following fields. Student ID, phone name, surname and date of birth. Here now we can identify following characteristics in a table field. The first one is each field in a table has a unique name. Note however that the same field name can occur in other tables of the same relational database. The next thing is each field stores a single item of data. For example, a field called date of birth would store no more than one date of birth value. And the next one is, each field has a particular data type. For example, it can be a text, boolean, integer value, date, time value, etc. The next one is, each field can have its own validation rules. So these rules ensure that data recorded in the field is of the right type and right format. The next concept we are going to learn is, primary keys. So each table has a primary key and this is a field chosen so that it can uniquely identify each record. Remember the table we had shown you in earlier slides. 
So in that table, there were two records with the identical forename and surname with the date of birth, but different ID values. Because that ID field was the primary key of that table, Therefore, we identified there were two different student records. Sometimes an existing unique attribute is used as the primary key, but most of the time some sort of ID is created. The importance of primary key is it makes very simple to extract each of the records in the table. The next concept we are going to learn is foreign keys. A foreign key is used to link tables together and create a relationship. It is a field in one table that is linked to the primary key in another table. So most of the time a foreign key is the primary key in a different table and it is not necessarily to be unique. So now we know the most important four basic concepts. Tables, fields, primary keys and foreign keys. So now we can learn the relationships between the tables. In order to create a relationship between two tables, a link is created using the key fields. In this illustration, there are two tables. The top one is the patient table and the bottom one is the test result table. So can you guess what is the primary key in the patient table? Yes, it is the patient ID. Patient ID is the primary key of patient table. And then how about the test result table? Yes, test result ID is the primary key of test result table. So now how to establish the link between these two tables? Yes, by using the patient ID. So this means that as each test result is added to the test result table, the only data about the patient that needs to be added is the patient ID, where it becomes known as the foreign key. So this patient ID enables a relationship between the two tables and apart from the foreign key there is no duplication of data, so no data redundancy. If someone wants more details about the patient who was tested, it can be easily accessed because of the relationship between the two tables of the data. Ok now, there are three different types of relationship between entities. The first one is one-to-one, -one. for example, student and a report card. A student can have one report card and a report card is belong to only one student. The second one, one-to-many, for example, mother and children. A mother can have children, but a child has only one mother. Third one is many-to-many, -many. for example, actor and a film. A actor stars in many films and a film can have many actors. So each of the mentioned relationship can be shown in ER diagrams, entity relationship diagrams. So what you see in here is the one type of ER diagram. To make a relationship between two tables, they must have at least one key field in common. The primary key of one of the tables must be added as a field to the other table where it will become the foreign key. A key strength of a relational database is its ability to force records to be consistent. This is called the data integrity of a database. There are two ways of doing this. First one is referential integrity and the second one is data validation. Referential integrity forces a rule that a primary key cannot be duplicated in a table. So this ensures that if the primary key of one table is changed, then the foreign keys in the other tables also get updated. Data validation rules can be put in place that forces field data values to be in a certain format. For example, a date field may have to use date month year format and not month date year format. So this is called data validation. That's all what we've got under this episode. Basically now you know what is a table, a field, a record and what are primary keys and foreign keys and what types of relationships are there, one to one, one to many, many to many kind of 
All of these concepts will be useful in further episodes under this section. From the next lecture, we are going to discuss how to do a good database design. So, thank you for watching. See you in the next lecture. This video brought to you by edupediaworld.com. Watch more from our website.